Hi, welcome to Taji's World of Books and welcome to another book series recommendation video. Hey you guys, happy Friday. I am so happy to be back and I'm really excited to talk with you guys about the Honey series. And so I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna talk to you about all the books in the series, but first I wanna give you an overview of what the story is about and then we can kinda of go into it. So I gotta say, like, I was super surprised when I went into this because all I knew was that this was a sexy novel about a club. That's all I knew. I go into everything blind and I love that I do that because I am so pleasantly surprised when I do it that way. So having come off of the mafia romances and all the dark stuff that I've been reading, this was a breath of freaking fresh air. Let me tell you, I was not expecting this. This is erotica. It is spicy, it is, is steamy, it is BDSM, it is. it gives you all the feels. Like, I haven't read anything by Kristen Ashley before, and I think this is different than what she typically writes, but when I say this is steamy, I have never read BDSM scenes, steamy scenes like this in my life, and I was over the moon. It was so good. Okay, so the Honey series is about a high-end, BDSM club that is run by a guy named Arius, 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 or Arius, Arius. Um, and he decided that he, because he's into kink and he is a dom and he wanted a place that he could create for like-minded people where they could go and be free to express their kinks and live their lifestyle and be around other like-minded people. But this is not just about BDSM like we're playing in this. This is like for full-on lifestyle people who have contracts who take this serious. This is they live breathe and eat this. This is for people who have known their entire lives that they were different. They have known their entire lives that they had a kink and they needed to be able to express that kink in a very free and open way and if they were not able to do it then it would mean that they were living a half-life, basically. Okay, so the club is set in Arizona, and it is a very it is for very high-profile people, so the membership fees are astronomical in order to get in. They have a couple slots for people that are like on financial aid, but for the most part, like you have to be a bazillionaire to get into this place, and it caters to the wealthy, rich, and famous, and it has all the amenities. It also has all the security checks and everything, so um, when you go there, you can practice with safety and security and know that you're okay. The Honey series itself is about alpha subs. So let's talk about alpha subs. We all know about the dom and the sub relationship, right? And it's a relationship based on trust and mutual respect. And it's a power. The subs are the ones with the power because they are giving over and controlling the scenes and the dom and they entrust that to the dom to keep them safe and to ensure that they're going to have a pleasant experience for both of them. And they both go into the kink the scene with this idea that we mutually are going to be fulfilled whether i get fulfillment as a sub by giving you what you want which is to dominate me and i and and if i give you everything that you want no matter no holds barred if that's what my kink is and i give you everything then that's i get pleasure from doing that and you get pleasure from it so it's a pleasurable a mutually pleasurable experience for both of us so it's all about finding that equal match right as is anything in life so alpha subs are like the creme de la creme. You, you want an alpha sub because an alpha sub as a dom, an alpha sub is somebody who, especially if you're a female dom, an alpha sub is gonna be somebody who is an alpha outside in your day-to-day -day life and they're a man's man and they're a dude and they're hardcore and they're not playing around. But when it comes to playtime and when it comes to being in the playroom, they want to be dominated. And if that means paddled and flogged and whipped and stripped and plugged and all of it it's happening and they're down for it and that's it's all good and so these alpha subs are very rare but in the honey series they are in abundance okay so that's the backstory of the honey series so the first book is called the deep end and the deep end is about amelie and olivier and amelie has been on the scene she is been friends with Aries for a very, very long time. She is a master mistress. Like, she knows her stuff. She's trained under Aries. She knows what she's doing. She's competent. She is, she knows, she knows it all. And other people at the club that are younger and not have been practicing as long look up to her to 
you know, practice, safe play, and she just knows what she's doing, but she's also getting very bored with the scene, and she's bored with the scene because she's not getting anything of what she wants. Until in comes the six foot four tall hunk of man who is gorgeous and beefy and just all of those things and is a, a sub and wants to be dominated. And when she sets her sights on him, it is in a whole another stratosphere. And there are, it's really interesting because it's about, th this novel is very different than every other novel. The angst in this novel is, or in these books are not about like misunderstandings and are we not understanding each other and we're breaking up and we're gonna not see each other for 10 years and then I'm gonna waste all this time. No, it's about couples getting together and once they're together, it's about communication and working through the challenges and things and their own insecurities and their own fears that come up and then utilizing the people that are in your friend group to help support you through these challenges that you're having so that you get what you want. And this book is no different. So she believes that Olivier, or they call him Ali, Ali is this wealthy businessman because obviously you get into this club because you are wealthy and you're a part of this echelon and that you've been practicing forever because you have a you have a, um, a dossier that you fill out and you have all this information these background checks so they know who you are and so you know what you want and they know they know the Dom that you know what you want and so Ali signs up as a no holds barred he's open to anything and he'll take it and he's game and it starts to become clear that something is interesting about Ali it's not quite the way that he either is just doesn't give a fuck or there's something else going on and so the story sort of unfolds from there and it is spicy and it's steamy and I have to say I gave this book a five out of five star no I gave this a four out of five star this is not even the best book in the series but this book was off the chain it was so so good it also had a little mystery component so you have a security element and the security dude is named Branch and he's out there trying to figure out what's going on with some other doms in the scene that are being unscrupulous you get you start to get to know the cast of characters and I gotta say because it's a tight community everybody's all up in everybody's business and so everybody and not only is everybody up in everybody's business but everybody there's cameras and there's like two-way mirrors so you can see the play scenes that are going on so people are watching and seeing what's going on and people are coming to her going you're a dom and you're letting him do this and how can this happen and it's just drama for days and it is so 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 good so like i said the mystery component is very interesting the backstory of what's going on with that you know there is there a crime going on they're trying you're trying to figure out what's going on with that as well as watching the relationship and the insecurities unfold and trust develop between Dom and Sub as well as between Amelie and Olivier or Ali in terms of them as individuals not just as mistress and sub and what that all means and it is beautiful to watch and they describe some of the scenes as art and beauty at play when you watch it but watching their relationship develop is beautiful because they are beautiful people and they deserve happiness and they need to get past the things that have happened in their past that have made them not trust and have put them in places of vulnerability and so i gotta say i've gushed about this book if you haven't read it oh my god go out and read this book it is so 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 good okay so then the next book in the story is called the furthest edge and i mentioned that the security specialist that Aries is friends with that he contracts to do all of his um, security and detail and he, if he needs some work done or things happening he contracts Branch we meet Branch at the end of this story because of something that happens and Branch is now and we also hear about Evangeline and clearly something Evangeline was attacked and something awful happened to Evangeline and so now and we heard about it in the first book and it the story is coming out in this book and this is about branch and evangeline and the things that branch needs because he's got some intense kinks and the things that evangeline needs to work out and how she goes about working it out with him and this book was hot and it was amazing and it was dealing with ptsd and trauma on both sides and ha having to overcome fears and to trust again and to not let your fears dictate and rule who you will be so in here there's a power differential financial power differential and here there is a you're taking a serious 
alpha dude who's like alpha to the next level but he's also a sub and he wants his mistress to hand his ass to him but outside of that play situation he is like I'm not playing around with your safety and I'm not taking no for an answer and so watching that dynamic play out and the scene the steamy scenes in here are just off the hook like this is a five out of five star and like I said each book in the series just gets better and better and I just want more and more and I'm so sad that this series is over because I just want to just live in this world like I want to go to Phoenix and I want to immerse myself at the honey and just sit and observe all this drama because this is amazing so that is the furthest edge and she, it's called the furthest edge because she's taking him to the edge and he's gonna let her and she goes and not only am I taking you to the edge but we're gonna dive off of it together and so just buckle up because this is where we're going and he's like yes mistress and I was just like I'm sailing too it was good all right you guys so then the last book in the series is called the greatest risk and I loved this story with such tremendous passion because we've heard about Stellan from book one. I'm not going to tell you why. And Stellan deserves everything that happens in this book because Stellan is scrumptious. And if you read Fifty Shades of Grey and you think Christian is something, he does not have it. He doesn't hold a candle to Stellan. And so this is Stellan's story with Simone. Let's just put it that way. And it is a chunker. And it needs to be a chunker because he is, they are working through some stuff and it is beautiful and it is gorgeous and it's about loving somebody to health. And I love this. I think it just says everything. He says, I want to be your lover. I want to be your master. I want to know all your secrets. I want to unravel the mystery that's you and then help you keep it safe. I want you and the way I want you is beside me, in my bed, in play, and in life would you just not I, I'm like I'm a puddle I'm a puddle on the ground I can't even stand up because I'm just a puddle like I'm just mush I was just Stellan is gorgeous is gorgeous if you have not read this book you need to read everything else because these this series has everything that I absolutely love in books it has a, a tight-knit cast of characters it has friends that are connected that we see in each and every book so we get to know them so it's not just about the couple it's about all of their friends it is an ongoing storyline that's developing and an arc development it's about these characters that are getting their HEAs but they're working through it and it's not about the angst and breaking up and 10 years apart and all this other like drama but it is about misunderstandings and communication and seeing through conflict and figuring out how to work it out and making compromise and figuring out how to do it it was a very mature and very it's just a very mature way to kind of approach a relationship as opposed and creating angst in the development of that as opposed to you know um, creating artificial angst and making it something that it should have never been. You just should have had a conversation and talked it through. There's none of that bullshit in here. And I loved it for that. I loved it. Okay, so in this story, then, you know, the mystery is unfolding. There's another club at that's in the scene in Phoenix for those people who are not at the echelon to be able to belong to the honey because the honey is like the creme de la creme. The other club is called Bolt and Bolt is for, and then, you know, the people that own Bolt are also friends with people that are in these books as well. And there's an unfolding drama that's going on and a mystery. And as that sort of comes out, we meet another cast of characters and that leads you into the last story that's in this series and I'll put it over here and it's called Loose Ends and Loose Ends is a bind up of novellas that Kristen, Alley, Kristen Ashley wrote to kind of tie up the loose end of many of her stories and so this one is um, as I'll put it over here is about it's an MMF romance and it is about Diesel, Maddox, and Molly. And it is so gorgeous because we are introduced to Diesel, Maz Maddox, and Molly at the end of this story. And you can see that they are a menage or a thruple and they are in the kink scene and they are trying to work through. Molly is all in with her boys, but it's Maddox and Diesel, namely Diesel, that's trying to work through some stuff that he has with this beautiful, gorgeous relationship that he has with Maddox that he has not fully come to terms with. And they do that in this short novella. And it is so beautiful and it matters so much and it is 
it needs to happen and Diesel needs to confront the, the demons of his past so that he can have a future with the people that he loves. And there is no doubt that he loves them, but he just doesn't know how to express to the world that he loves them. And we worked through that in um, Loose Ends and they, she did it in a gorgeous way and they ultimately get their HEA and they deserved it, but their steamy scenes are hot. And when you read the novella, it seems like even though they're a throuple, it's really about Maddox and Diesel working out. And it's not Maddox. Maddox has come to terms with him being bi and he's okay with his, his bisexuality. It's Diesel that struggles and you start to understand why Diesel struggles and you see what Maddox and um, Molly are willing to do for Diesel to help him get through it because they're not gonna let him go. Cause he is, they don't fit unless they don't fit as two. They fit as they're a throuple. They're a menage. They fit together. And in order for it to work, they have to be together. And they have to convince him and get him to see that. And they do that with the help of characters that are in this book, in the series. And they come all together to do that. And everybody gets their HEA. And I have to say, this is one of those series that I went into it like thinking like, oh, it's going to be, you know, just a thing. And like, and I'll read it and like, whatever. But it is hands down absolutely an outstanding series the best menage that i have ever read and this most steamiest scenes that i have ever read and a great storyline a great character development an amazing arc lots of trauma i love the alpha sub representation i also loved how she represents the dom sub relationship and it truly demonstrates what the reality is of living a lifestyle of being in the bdsm lifestyle and not just be like we're pre playing that stuff like these are people that live breathe eat it in every aspect of their lives and it doesn't just translate into what we do at the club it also translates into what we do in our day-to-day -day life and how we live that out but also how we integrate our vanilla friends or people that are not part of the lifestyle into our lives as well so that you know you can see what the whole picture looks like and so I thought it was an amazing representation the this whole series for me is an absolute five out of five star I loved it and it just doesn't get any better than this. And if you haven't read it, please go and check it out. You will be pleasantly surprised and very pleased that you did so. Trust me on this. And I think as a result, I'm gonna pick up some other Kristen Ashley books and see if I like those as well because she's a new author to me and so I'm happy to do a spotlight on her and see what I can find. You guys, having said that, that is all that I have for today, and now we're going to dive back into Mafia World, and so I'll see you back with more J.M. Darhauer in my next video. But until then, you know I upload new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I really look forward to seeing you then. Please like and sub subscribe, and come and hang out with me more. Bye!